Good day, subscribers. Today is episode one of semester three, getting into waitlisted courses. If you'd like to see the previous episode before watching this one, click the banner in the upper right hand corner. In the last episode, we did a final review of Knowledge Based AI CS7637, which is the course I took over this summer. We went through the pros and the cons for the course, and who I thought the course would be most useful for. As has become almost tradition at this point, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers out there for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. As I always say, I love making these videos and seeing your reaction and how it helps you guys get through the program. This episode's comic is about a bunch of different programming languages and how they all look to us computer scientists. In this episode, we're going to look at waitlisted courses and see how you can figure out before registration whether you're going to be able to get into that waitlisted course or if you should start looking at other courses for your options. This video actually was inspired by a Reddit post that we'll take a look at later. So first off, what is a waitlisted course? A waitlisted course is a course that you signed up for but did not actually get into. Each course has a cap for the number of students that are allowed to be in that course. And so if you have a late number in your time ticket, meaning you didn't get the first choice for classes, you might not be able to get into your number one class, in which case you would probably be waitlisted for that class, meaning you're not registered for it, but you're on a list of people who want to get into that course, and if space is available, will be allowed to get into that course. What we're looking at now is a snippet of a bunch of courses for this semester that I'm signing up for, fall 2019. As you can see, you have the cap, the action, and the remaining. The cap is the total number of students who are allowed in that course. The action is the number of students who have currently signed up for that course. And the remaining is the remaining number of open seats in that course. So if remaining is not equal to zero, most likely if you sign up for that class, you'll just get right into the class and you'll be registered for it. However, as you guys can see, there are currently a bunch of places where remaining is equal to zero, meaning that class is filled to the brim with students. So, if you were to sign up for those classes, you would be placed on the waitlist. Here, we can see the waitlist. And so just like the class, the waitlist has its own cap. Most of them are 999, which my guess is just the biggest number that they can place in that section. As many students as can sign up, can sign up onto the waitlist. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get in. And we'll do an example of that at the end of this video. If you were to sign up for these classes, you'd be placed on the waitlist and you'd be given a number one greater than the current waitlist action number. Here we can see the difference between being waitlisted for a course and being registered for a course. Some of these snippets come from a previous video I did on waitlisted courses which I'll link in the video description. As you guys can see and for anybody who's followed along on these videos I've already taken computational photography. So the snippet on the left is actually a snippet that came from my first semester in the program. As you guys can see, when you're registered for a course, your status is registered. And for OMSCS students, it'll be registered web. However, if we look at the left snippet, when you are waitlisted for a course, your status is waitlisted course, and it gives the date. And then it also gives you your waitlist position, meaning the number that you are on that waitlist number. So in this class, I was number 34 for the waitlist, meaning I was the 34th person to get into the class once space opened up. And for anybody who's followed these videos, I did get into computational photography for my first class. So as I said at the beginning of this video, this video is actually entirely inspired by a Reddit post that you guys can see on the right. So thank you Reddit OMSCS and thank you Pikachu, who is the person who posted this Reddit post. As you guys can see, what this Reddit post is, is a post about how to tell whether you are going to be able to get into the waitlisted course or not based on your position. 
It's actually a really, really smart idea, which is why I'm really grateful to both this Reddit post thread and the Reddit poster. Essentially, it's a three-step process. First, you make a list of the classes that you're interested in and the classes that you're waitlisted for. Then, you check the number of students who were allowed into the class the previous semester. And then third, you observe the difference between the number on the waitlist you are and the number who were allowed in the previous semester. And based on that, you should be able to figure out whether or not you're likely to get into the course. So we went through the general idea. Now, let's jump into an example so you guys can see how this method actually works. So in this example, we're going to go through those three steps. And the example class we're going to use is CS6200, Graduate Intro to OS. So, if we look at Graduate Intro to OS, if we were to sign up right now, we would be number 204 on the waitlist. The way I got 204 is the current waitlist action is 203. So if I was to sign up, I would be action number 204. Next, since the semester I'm signing up for is fall 2019, we go to the previous semester, spring 2019, and look at the number of students who are allowed in that class. The reason we're going to use spring 2019 instead of summer 2019 is because summer courses might have a little bit of a different status just because they're summer courses, they're a little bit shorter, so they might have a few less kids in it just so that they can more easily handle the speed. If we take a look at spring 2019, what we see is that a total of 650 kids were allowed into the class because the cap for this class was 650. So now we just do some really simple math. We do the number of people who were allowed in the class last semester, 650, minus the number of people who are currently in the class this semester, 597, and we get a number 53, which means people on the wait list who are number 53 and below are likely to get into the class based on last semester's numbers. Our number, 204, is unfortunately way too high to get into the class, and at this point, we would want to start looking at other options for classes that I might want to take for that semester. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something. If you have any questions or video requests, leave a comment in the comment section. Again, I'd like to thank Reddit and the poster for the content of this video. And, as I said before, I'll leave the link to the previous video I made on waitlist in the video description. Thanks, and subscribe.